Today, we had a chance to interview Dr. Barbara Hamilton, a radiologist from California who specializes in vascular and interventional radiology. Dr. Hamilton chaired the Women in IR section of the Society of Interventional Radiology between 2017 and 2019, and she started a blog that aims at supporting and helping women build their confidence and professional careers. So, Dr. Hamilton, welcome. Was Thank IR you so much. An, welcome? Was IR an easy choice for you? What made you choose it? Yes and no. I, the first time I encountered an interventional procedure, I was drawn in. I thought that the, the gentleman per performing the fistulagram was a wizard. And so I was immediately enthralled by what he was doing and I wanted to know more. Uh, it was a short time later that I knew I would be an IR. And uh, at the same time as we train, there are a lot of messages uh, telling us, you know, some spoken, some unspoken. And I started to wonder where all the women were. And, you know, I, I thought I might be missing something. So that became a little bit of a, it gave me a pause. Throughout your IR training, was there anything you would have changed or uh, improved? Yes. So I, you know, training was wonderful. I went to the best institutions that I could. But through that period, I felt a lot of isolation. And so if there was any way to magically go back and fix that, I would try to decrease the isolation that I felt because it wasn't helping my performance and it was kind of depressing. And so that's what I strive to do with my platform is to decrease the sense of isolation that women feel in these fields. Great. Uh, two years ago, you chaired the Women in IR section of the Society of Interventional Radiology. Can you tell us more about what the goals of the committee were? What were your objectives in this role and what was achieved during your term of office? That was a, a whirlwind a uh, few years. So I applied to be a vice chair of this new group that was being formed by the SIR before I even realized that would mean that I'd become the chair. So that's how naive I was as I entered my committee position. Um, during my, my tenure, I guess, as chair, I really wanted to just be a place for women to land. So I thought it was, you know, we were doing a lot of projects and a lot of different things as we had a lot of energy in the section, but I also felt like it was important just to be as visible as possible so that women uh, who are interested in interventional radiology could just find us and have like a place to land in the society. Beyond that, I felt like it was important to continue the, the brief legacy that had started, which was basically that this group was a place for women to start to learn how to lead within the society. And that was certainly true for me. So I could actually, it was like a springboard for leadership where you could start within this women in IR section and start to work on projects and learn how the society worked and then um, actually use it as a springboard to meet other people outside of our section and other people in the society. And that of course leads to opportunities. As far as the section uh, achievements, they were wonderful. So we started, uh, we published the pregnancy toolkit online, which is a wealth of information because this is a commonly asked question for women, whether they have kids or they don't, you know, how will you deal with the radiation? So we compiled a big resource online, which is still being built out. And so the pregnancy toolkit was one of the big um, accomplishments during my, my period there. Um, you participated in the writing of a position statement on parental leave conducted by the Society of Interventional Radiology. So you told us about your views. Can you tell us a little more about your views on work-related issues that pregnant women in IR usually face? Uh, so the statement on parental leave was, uh, you know, this, uh, our section felt like the society should have some kind of a baseline statement. I know in Europe, women get a lot more time off after having a pregnancy and a birth, but for us, it's very uh, inconsistent. Some groups will have no maternity policy whatsoever. And so it's actually important for our societies to have some kind of a consensus for a baseline. And so we put out this statement saying that, you know, 
there should be a paid parental leave. Um, that's kind of, <laughs> it's uh, not a given here. And so that was why we felt the need to do that. As far as pregnancy related issues, I think there is a lot of misinformation about radiation in pregnancy. And um, we try to combat that with resources and information. And I do feel like we are the ambassadors, you know, as radiologists, we know the most about radiation physics and we are in a position to teach, you know, women in all these different specialties and, and our colleagues, our male colleagues as well, that yes, it's okay to go do an arthrogram or yes, you can practice IR throughout a pregnancy. This is actually, it can be safely done. And have you as a mom ever doubted your choice to pursue this specialty? Is there any advice you could share with young uh, IR moms in order to keep a better work-life balance? I have never regretted uh, becoming an IR because I became an IR before I became a mom. That may not be true for everyone, uh, but for me, I feel my career is the realization of my talents and my interests. And so just because you become a parent, it doesn't necessarily change those things. I mean, you still are who you are. Um, so I'm very happy with having chosen this career. As far as balance, that is a huge topic and something that I, I do like to write about because it's such a massive lifelong, I think, um, thing that we can all work on throughout our careers and our lives. And I think the most empowering way to think about this is that you have a lot of choices. So if you come home from, say, a long day at work, you have a choice about who cleans your house. It doesn't have to be you. And so, you know, I think sometimes people make things really black and white or just according to what society thinks should happen. And in reality, we have a ton of choice as to how we run our lives and who does what and who can take things off of our plate. So I think that's really important to realize, you know, it's not black and white the way some people will present it. You really have to embrace that choice. Yeah. And you said before in an interview that IR, IR specialty has stereotypes, such as you have to be a certain height or you can't reach things if you're too small. Can you elaborate a little bit more on what you meant? Yes, unfortunately, uh, to this day, I hear these stereotypes spoken and written. I have had trainees, you know, a lot of these things are just said off the cuff in the IR suite, in the hallway. And for a lot of it, it's a lot of us, it's shocking. We can't believe this is still happening in 2021. So I think it's important that there are some of us here to combat those stereotypes uh, because they're not helping anyone choose the best career for them. I think they're helping people to settle on something else, you know, based on other people's expectations. Um, so I, you know, stereotypes, they don't ring true for me. If you're small in stature, you can be an IR. If you need a stool to stand on, you can be an IR. If you, the table is adjustable, you don't need to have a certain height to be an IR. You don't need gorilla strength. I have a, actually a very small but mighty friend who's a female, she's an orthopedic surgeon. Like for someone to say that an interventional radiologist needs to look a certain height or build is ridiculous. And I think we are just used to that IRs looking a certain way, which is often male. I think it'll change over time. Yeah, but what do you think IR is a male-dominated medical specialty? What are some of the obstacles young women see that stop them from choosing IR? So I think there are two things. The first one is the boys club reputation. So we look around and we don't see any women there and we wonder why. And the second one is concerns and misinformation about radiation. I think that really is a deterrent for women. And what do you believe the IR field must work on in order to attract a more diverse pool of physicians to this specialty? I think we need to be really intentional about inclusion. So inclusivity, it, uh, you know, it can't just be a shallow effort. We really need to wholeheartedly welcome women and underrepresented minorities to our field. And um, some people believe this is still not an issue, but that only... Uh, you know, we have a lot of implicit bias that still exists in our culture and especially in medicine and especially in the male dominated fields. So I think until we really uh, 
tackle that. We're going to continue to see some issues and women are going to feel like they're going against the grain to go into this field to a degree. I, I would like to see that change over time. And in 2018, you started a blog called the Tide Superheroine, where while talking about its mission, you have stated that becoming empowered as a female physician has often meant stepping out of my, outside of my comfort zone. Can you tell us about one example where being a woman in IR meant stepping out of your comfort zone? I would say walking into the IR department every day was walking outside of my comfort zone. <laughs> so, okay. and then once you're in your career, then, well, of course, in training, you're learning so fast, none of that is comfortable. And we all know in medicine, that's kind of normal. But then sometimes if you're not of the stereotypical group or like the default group, you may feel like it's just you uh, who feels that way. But I think even people in the majority group do feel that way as well. It's such a challenging career and it's a tough thing to learn. Um, <clears throat> you know, as a practicing interventional radiologist at a trauma center, you know, I can, I, I step out of my comfort zone all the time. I'm asked to do ablations that are in difficult places. I have to talk to difficult family members or difficult patients. Sometimes I have a patient who's actively bleeding to death and I need to focus on finding where they're bleeding from and stop the bleeding. So yes, I would say if you're a person who thrives on stepping outside of your comfort zone, this is a great career. <laughs> so um, about, about your book, uh, what inspired you to write your book, Save Lives, Enjoy Your Own, Finding Your Place in Medicine? Yeah, after I had written on my blog for a couple of years, I thought I would write a little ebook, like an electronic book. And I found a book coach and she convinced me it could be a real book. So now it's a physical mm -hmm. book. I should have had a copy here to show you, but anyway. Um, I have it on my Kindle. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that's a great way to do it. Yeah. And I just felt that as we pick our careers in medicine, we are in such a, you know, we're gathering information so fast and we have to make this giant career decision about the rest of our lives. And then at the same time, a lot of us are dealing with this misinformation, like, for example, IR isn't for women or IR isn't for immigrants or IR isn't for such and such. Like there's so, there's so much misinformation that I felt like this book could help be a guide. And so that really inspired me to write it. Super. And based on your own experience, would there be any advice to young women in IR who during their studies start doubting their choice to pursue an IR career path? Yeah, I think... Uh, just knowing that doubt can be part of a normal process is um, helpful because um, there will be, you know, there will be people who tell you they doubt your path and you may doubt your own path. It adds up to a lot of doubt. Um, but I think if you can hone in on what your, like what your inner voice is telling you, if you want to work with your hands, if you know that you want to attend to emergencies, or maybe you don't, maybe you want to do all outpatient veins, you know, you know, the kind of work that kind of lights you up and makes you happy. And I would follow that and don't settle. That's my main piece of advice. Great. I think it's uh, inspirational to a lot of young um, IR women who want to pursue uh, this career. So I thank you for your, uh, sharing your story with us in your book, in your blog, and with this interview. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an honor.